From the New England School of Communications on the campus of Huston University, this is The Main Report, the way news should be. Hello and welcome to The Main Report. I'm Nick Blazak. On today's show, we'll talk about safety and security at Huston University. You'll hear about what safety measures are in place to protect students, how respondents approach an emergency situation, and later how advancements in technology can alert officers of a crisis in a matter of seconds. In order to shed light on the subject, we bring in Executive Director of Safety and Security, Mr. Raymond Vassett. First off, Ray, thanks for coming on the show today. My pleasure. Thank you for asking me. Could you start by providing a background about yourself and roles here at Huston for people watching that may not know a lot about you? Sure. Uh, a little bit about my background. I've basically been at Huston University now for about 18 months. Prior to coming to Huston University, I was in the state police for 30 years. So I spent the major part of my adult life uh, finding ways to protect people and keep them safe. Last year, as you mentioned, nearly 30 years being a Maine State Police officer, you decided to call it quits. What made you want to pursue a similar line of work here at Husson? Well, I actually had planned on doing an additional four years. Um, I served at the pleasure of the colonel, and we get appointed by the governor, and he had asked us to stay another four years, and that was my intent. And then when this position came available at Husson University, uh, it kind of caught me by surprise. Um, and what intrigued me was this opportunity had everything that I love under one roof. Um, I love an opportunity to mentor young students. Um, and with a criminal justice program here, that would give me the opportunity to do so. Um, I also love athletics, I love the arts, and I love education. So it was really um, uh, all those things combined that intrigued me to leave a little sooner than I anticipated. The perfect fit. How has your experience in the criminal justice field allowed you to transform the safety and security department here at Huston? Uh, that's a great question, and uh, it's very similar. You know, when you look at the size of Husson University, uh, with almost 4,000 students, we are as big, if not larger, than many ma small towns in Maine. One of the things that's been a, uh, a surprising experience for me is that I think many Mainers sit at home each night and look at what's taking place across our country on the evening news, and to some extent, I think for the most part, we say, wow, how lucky are we to live in the state of Maine. But when you work at an institution of higher education, um, our culture here are students who come from not only all those places across our country, but all of those interesting places in the world. So I've been able to learn quite a bit more interacting with our students who have different perspectives from their life experiences in those places that we see when we watch the, the, the evening news every night. Why do you think Maine isn't as violent as some cities like Detroit or Cleveland? What makes Maine more safe? Well, I think it also comes down to a bit of demographics. When you look at the size of the state of Maine and our population, we are sped, spread very thin. We have very few large built up urban areas. Um, so the fact that our population is spread out over a large area um, and there just isn't as much um, compact um, uh, population with a lot of interaction, um, I think it makes it easier for everyone to have their own space and just kind of do their own thing. We preface this at the top of the program, but what are some safety procedures that are in place to protect students? Well, there are some that are obvious. I think the obvious are the fact that you see the safety and security personnel and vehicles in and around campus. Um, that is a visible sign of uh, the fact that there is a safety presence here. There are some that aren't so obvious. Um, as uh, in regards to uh, this year, we have a new comprehensive emergency response plan that is an all hazards response plan. Um, it's very compliant with a lot of national standards, ICS and NIMS. Um, so we're, I'm very proud of that. Um, the plan is a plan of action uh, rather than just a voluminous document that has a bunch of information in it that no one will probably ever read. Um, this document is actually a bit more succinct, concise. It provides very uh, clear direction in an emergency what our response is going to be. Um, as a sub part of that, um, I know that we can't take an emergency plan and cover the entire university like a warm blanket and expect it's going to work well for the entire university. So we recognize that each location on campus provides unique challenges. So there are subunit plans um, and there is a plan specific for each building on campus. And with that, we've identified team captains uh, for all locations on campus, and they're responsible for maintaining the plan, providing education, and feedback for updates to the plan annually, which we will do every August. And we'll update the plan based on lessons learned here over the past year, or lessons learned across our country. Um, so that's probably not very visible to most students, but um, I'm proud of that. We also have redundancy built into the plan. Uh, in other words, um, if we couldn't continue functioning on our campus on normal operations, where would we go to do so, and things of that nature. 
You mentioned that some things aren't so obvious, like the services you offer. One of those could be the safe walks and escort service that allows students to roam around campus with ease, knowing that they have a personal guide with them. How do you spread the word about these services so more people know about them? Sure. In many speaking engagements, we often refer to them. Um, in the beginning of the year, we also advise all our faculty uh, about the safe walk escort programs and other notification systems we have at safety and security. Um, on our web page, if they go to the student life section and go down to security, all of the information is also included on our page for the, for the department. All students at Husson are given a university email address. How important is it to take advantage of that so you can quickly push alerts out? Well, we have a, uh, a multifaceted way to push out alerts. Uh, it will reach out to email, that's one, but we know that in order to increase your margin of success that we need to be diversified. So it will go out through text, email, social media. We also have the monitors throughout campus that will have a banner scroll across it when there's an emergency. We have the system called E2 Campus where we will send eagle alerts that will reach out and touch all of those in a push of a button, and I can even do so from my phone if need be. We pre-format uh, some templates because uh, we know that in emergency situations whenever you can save seconds, seconds save, li seconds save lives. Um, and by having pre-formatted templates that will save time and also I'm no different than anybody else. In an emergency situation those fine motor skills get more difficult and if they're pre-formatted it's a matter of just hitting the button and selecting the right one and instantly our community will receive that emergency alert. Speaking of getting help in an emergency situation with a click away, we'll find out after the break about a device that can send out an emergency situation called the Peace of Mind device after this. So like I said, everything I learned about cooking, I learned from grandma's empanadas. Shall we go again? Yep. Mix beef with the onions, the onions with the peppers, the peppers with the paprika, the paprika, the garlic, the garlic with the oregano, the oregano with the cumin. Got it? Got it. Throw in the olives, stir, season, stir again, pour out the flour, roll out the dough, make a circle, drop in a fistful of filling, fold over, press down, and ta-da! Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But two minutes twice a day making sure they brush is easier, and it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. This is a device that you can carry with you on your keychain 24-7. That device is called the Palm, a peace of mind security tool created to put users at ease during a crisis. Husson University is the first college in the nation to roll out the Palm-sized gadget geared toward making the process of alerting emergency responders faster. Just one push of the device's button and your location and personal information is sent to campus security. It will come through to here or if an officer is not in here, it will go to the cell phones that the officers carry with them. The Palm also enables instant two-way communication by connecting to your cell phone via Bluetooth. The device will beep and buzz when activated. However, users looking for a more discreet version can choose the silent Palm which emits no sound and only allows the dispatcher to hear communication sent from the device. The Palm records all audio signals sent in case police or security need to review the event at a later point in time. Customers interested in the Palm can opt into the program online for a yearly subscription of $45. Welcome back to The Main Report. I'm your host, Nick Blazak, as we continue our conversation with Executive Director of Safety and Security, Raymond Bissett. Now, Ray, prior to the break, we were talking about your work as a police officer and the importance of technology in handling a situation. As we just heard, the Palm device can send out an alert in a matter of seconds. How did you hear about this device? Well, uh, that's a great question. I know in the previous segment we talked about ways that we reach out to our community, but really a very important part of what we do is uh, looking at the ways that folks would reach out to us when they need our services. So early last year I started looking at what processes were available for our community to reach out to safety and security. And it was obvious you can have in-person interaction with a request, telephone, um, and then it kind of really tapered off from there. As some folks are aware, many larger campuses, when you walk across them, you might see those blue light campuses across the campus. That provides another way for someone to reach out to safety and security in an emergency situation. Um, so I started exploring different options that might be available. We know technology changes very fast. And uh, the Vice President of Administrative Services, uh, Mr. Craig Hadley, had received communication from one of his former colleagues at Columbia University about this product and asked me if I had an interest in looking into it. And when I did, I was really intrigued and I thought that this product addressed a gap that currently exists in a way that people would reach out to us. And when it was first rolled out, first implemented, were there any bugs or issues that have led to feedback and future improvements? Uh, 
Another good question. Um, when it was first rolled out, because it's technology, and we know that with technology it's not a matter of if, but when things are going to misfire, um, and it was a new company, we thought it would be best to do a beta test uh, before we decided to commit. So for four months last year, we took a diverse group of 30 members of our community, provided them the device, some education, and had them test the device for that four-month period. And we were quite impressed that it did exactly what the vendor said it was going to do. We didn't have any reports of uh, activations that did not go through. So with that, we decided to make a more long-term commitment, um, and we felt it would work real well in our community. Now that it's fully been implemented on average during the school year, how many alerts do you receive on a monthly basis? Well, on a monthly basis, we probably receive quite a few. Uh, so far, most of them have been inadvertent alerts or someone who is reconnecting the device to a new device. Um, but that's okay because the more we use it, regardless of the circumstances, uh, we want to make sure that it's ready and available when a real emergency happens. So we use it, folks have been using it when they're locked out of their room, whenever they need to contact us, I'm okay with them using the device. How much of a relief do you think it provides parents that are generally concerned for the well-being of their child? Another great question. Um, we believe that the company named the product so appropriately because peace of mind is exactly what it provides. I often say that in security there are two things to consider, your sense of security and your actual security. The actual security you hope you never really need, but your sense of security is something you need every day. And I think knowing that that is there and it's available should they need it in an emergency does just what they say. It provides that peace of mind. Moving forward, what do you think the outreach potential for this device will be? I really believe that this has great opportunity for growth. Um, I'm proud to say that we're certainly the first ones in the state of Maine to deploy this device. Um, I know that folks who have used it, even in situations where it's been inadvertent, um, even knowing what its capabilities are, um, the fact uh, just last week we had a, a student who was shopping at the main mall down in Westbrook inadvertently activate their device and we got the alert, we could see their location on the screen um, in the dispatch. Um, and the device, when it's not on campus, will automatically go to 911, which it did. Uh, so Westbrook received that phone call, but we, are, we reached out to the student to make sure that things were okay, um, and they were quite impressed to see that we could tell that they were at the main mall, and no matter where they are, when they push that button, we will get that information. At the start of the next school year, Huston is hoping to complete new townhouses, a new form of residency here on campus. What will that mean, the development for safety and security? We've been quite involved in those meetings, and I'm pleased that the architects and the engineers have allowed us to participate. So everything from lighting of walkways, because it's a further distance away than the existing residence halls, um, we're making sure that those are up to standards. Um, you know, video cameras uh, to, uh, to provide protection and surveillance in the parking lot areas. Um, everything from that to heights of first floor windows. We've been involved in the process the whole way. So, um, and the new townhouses um, really is going to provide a different style of living um, where safety and security, unlike in the residence halls, um, those are really going to be more like homes for people. So we just need to make sure that we have a presence in the area and that we're um, available on the perimeter if folks ever need us for anything. Finally, Ray, you peer all around campus, you go to sporting events, extracurricular activities, and would you say that not only are you doing your job, but you're also interacting and getting to know the community of Hudson? Yes, and that's something that's near and dear to my heart. I inferred earlier about some of the things that we see going on across our country, and I think if we were to look at a root cause in many of those circumstances, I see the uh, where departments have lost connection with their community, and I know in my heart that if the only time we come to folks is when they've done something wrong or I need something from them, that's an equation for disaster. So it's really becoming part of the community that's the key to our success. All right, Ray, thank you for conducting this interview with me, taking time out of your day. Thank you very much, Nick. He is Executive Director of Safety and Security, Ray Bissett. We'd like to thank you for watching this episode of The Main Report. For everyone working hard behind the scenes, I'm Nick Blazek. Have a great night, everyone.